Hello guys and welcome to a q and A. I I wanted to make it super cute, super chilled, relaxed. I was like, let me do my makeup. I was like, you know, I do that all the time. That I want to do something a bit different. Sorry, this, this glass is really hot. I've got some peppermint tea. Um, I wanted to have some tea, relax, wind down. It's a Sunday evening. And I wanted to talk to you guys, catch up, because I haven't done that in a minute, as well as have some tea. But it's really, really hot right now, so I'm just going to leave that to the side. Oh. Can't get over my Uggs and how well they go with my place and my outfit right now. This set is, it's really nice. nice. It's backless, super cute. It's from House of CB. I got it a few years ago, maybe 2019, 20, 2019, 2020. It's from, it's from their loungewear section. Um, this cardigan, I believe it's from Everlane. No, it's from H&M actually. I'll try and link it down below. I must have got this last year. Uggs are from Shoe. Uggs, I plan on just wearing in the house. They don't leave the house. I don't go outside and take out the bins in them. I do absolutely nothing but wear them in the house. I thought I would want to wear them out, but they're honestly, they're too cute and I really want them to last me. I feel like the minute I start wearing them out in this UK weather, they're just not going to be the same. I really want them to be in the shop, can you tell? So I asked you to ask me some questions on IG. You guys asked a bunch of questions. Oh, someone asked me, what is a realization you came to this year, 2022, that you'll try to hold on to your future? The small things like just taking more care of my health and the inside of me. As you guys know, I love enjoyment. I really, really do. But this year, I'm really trying to work on more discipline on myself. I'm not gonna say I'm perfect, but I'm working on it. Um, having just a healthier lifestyle. Last year, um, I was looking at like an old vlog from last year. And just how I looked, I looked puffy in the face. I looked tired. I just wasn't taking care of myself. So yeah, 100% taking care of my health has been number 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 one um you know I, I take care of my peers i can always take care of my outside i dress well i try to look good and presentable but on the inside is way more important and it really helps you look better on the outside so working out more regularly eating a lot like eating balance i have a balanced diet i love food so i will never say you know I'm gonna eat strictly healthy. No, massive, massive help to that has been having my Fitbit. I have this on my wrist always, you guys know. I have a new Fitbit. This is the Sense 2. Of course, I'm gonna do close up for you guys. So, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I like to go for my morning workouts and I'll either do a HIIT class or I'll do Pilates. I find like those have gotten me to where I am now. I just want to be a bit more toned. Just slim down a little bit more and just have a routine of just working out and just feeling good and I use my Fitbit just to just give me the data that I can see the progress like I mentioned I am a lot more busier now so each morning Fitbit will give me a score and tell me if I need to focus on sleep or if I need to focus on working out and pushing and using more energy and it really has all the data by just being on my wrist all day every day and it gives me personalized active minutes goals for the day as well as recommended workouts or or ways to rest just depending on what my body needs so yes i'd say that is something i'm definitely going to be taking to the taking into the future you know i'm 25 i'm still young but i want to implement this way of thinking this way of treating my body so this becomes a lifestyle i don't want this to make this a short-term thing i want to make this a long-term thing and i just want to keep getting better and better and better you know i feel like i'll always prioritize looking good on the outside but prioritizing how i feel and what my body needs on the inside is just what's going to make everything come together full circle for me i'll leave a link to fitbit down below so you guys can go check them out check out everything just so amazing super sleek super cute it, it literally goes with my outfit everything is so uh, everything's so perfect <sighs> let me be honest let me get a drink let me let me get my tea so last year i made the most money i've ever 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 made in my life and you know i got carried away of course i was working out no of course i was working putting out content working with amazing amazing brands last year um 
it was also a time I was coming out, we were coming out of lockdown, so I was getting new opportunities, like things were really, really good and obviously I made I made a lot of money, I worked. You know, just just think, you know, 24, 23, 24, having, you know, access to money, access to opportunities, I, I just, I had a lot of access. So, you know, I just overindulged in many ways, whether it was splurging on material things, whether it was traveling, like I was, I was throwing money out the window pretty much because there were no investments, there was no return on investment, there was nothing. I was just throwing money out the window. So this year I have, I want to say I've reaped, oh, kind of, I've kind of reaped the consequences of it really because I didn't, I, I saved but I could have saved way, way, way more way more and now that you know i'm looking to i'd love to buy a house i'd love to start a business i'd love to do all these things it's like damn i really had all the capital and i just threw it on i think <laughs> so this year and forevermore i just i'm prioritizing um needs over wants uh last i caved into all my wants last year i caved into all my temptations mine really being retail therapy i love to spend i was spending when i felt sad i was spending when i felt happy i was spending when i felt bored i was just spending 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 and i'm really i'm such an impulsive spender so last year i just i just i just took a time so you know i ain't gonna say i ain't doing none of that anymore but like i'm just taking everything in doses i need to think way more about my future so i'd say health finances and when it comes to relationships um i've learned to put my pride aside more than ever uh i'm someone like if if the 18 19 20 even 21 year old was sitting here they will tell you listen i don't have any time i haven't got time for anyone but myself block 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 cut off people this that and sometimes it's valid it sometimes it's validated but a lot of the time it's really just miscommunication you know not really being clear not really being honest i feel like a lot of people are afraid to be honest and afraid to be vulnerable especially with friendships relationships family all of those things and you'd rather distance yourself than open up so i think this year like last year into this year i've just tried to open up a little bit more even to you guys like i, I i'm naturally just guarded you know I, I never know who's watching or what anyone's motives are but i'm just trying to put my trust in others the very scary thing to do very very scary thing to do if i say i want to someone as a friend or i want to bring someone closer i need to be ready to bring the walls down and sometimes i'm not ready to bring the walls down like i'm a great listener I'm a great listener because I really like to think about myself. I don't like it. I'll sit and listen to your problems and just hear you. I love it. That is my favorite thing to do when it comes to me. Oh, baby, I've got to go. I've got to go. So I'm trying to just say how I mean, say how I feel, be honest, have clear lines of communications. Um, and also give people the benefit of the doubt because even though I'm on this journey, it does not mean everyone else is on their journey with me. So I need to be more understanding um, and I don't need to think of worst case scenario all the time. Uh, and that has helped me this year and I feel like I'm gonna definitely carry that on to next year. I just, I just don't wanna think the worst of people because thinking like that is just, oh, it's exhausting and it's sad. So yeah, I'm definitely an overthinker and a worst case scenario person. So this year as well as moving forward, I just want to give people benefit benefit of the doubt, be open to whatever comes my way. And if things happen, so be it, I'll be fine. I know how to manage, I've done it before. It's nothing new, okay? I'm not new to this, I'm very much true to this. I can I can go whichever way you want to go, I'm ready to go. So vulnerability, 100 percent So that was a very one question that had a lot of a lot of depth because you can go many ways. What what also I'm gonna ask you guys, what's something I'm stealing her question, I'm so sorry. What was her name? Caroline. Caroline, I've stole your question to the audience. 
Guys, what is the realization you came to this year, 2022, that you'll try and hold onto your future? Please let me know, please. I'd love to pin some answers that you guys have for, to help other people. Um, someone said, congratulations on getting your license. Did you buy a car? Ah, thank you, first of all. Guys, let me tell you about the story of getting my license. You guys, you guys that have been with me know, I started doing my lessons. My mom got me my lessons. Back when I was honestly 17, I didn't take it seriously because I knew I wasn't gonna get a car, which is quite bad because it's might as well. <gasps> There's a spider. There's a spider. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I have to clip. I have to clip. Oh, my gosh. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Oh, huh. Hey. No, I didn't even kill it. Oh. yourself you have to learn to do things you can't be a baby you can't be a baby so yes I got I started doing lessons at 17 and I didn't um, really take it seriously because back then um, you couldn't really use you really had to use a book to pass your theory test and honestly it just it was like my mom gave me one fat book she's like this is why I used to pass my test here you go and it was like it's just a huge book and I was like oh my god please no <laughs> I was like no and um, I wasn't getting a car, so I was just like, oh, I'm gonna take it seriously, which is really, really dumb. I kind of wish I did take it seriously, and then I could have got like, like a cheap run around, maybe when I was 18. And then I was like, okay, I started doing my lessons again um, properly, and I was like, listen, I need to pass. I need to pass, and that was this year. I was like, I'm gonna take it seriously. I loved my instructor. I'll leave him down below if you guys wanna, if you guys are in like um, the London area. Uh, he's really really good um, and yeah and then I passed oh I, I booked my test June it was like June 16th I got tonsillitis and uh, and it was like you can still do it and I was just like no I was like my tonsillitis was awful I couldn't even brush my teeth you think I want to be yeah they'll film me for bad breath yeah because your breath gets really bad when you get tonsillitis like really bad like I had white spots in the back of my breath and my thing was so fat I couldn't speak Ugh, I don't even want to remember that like that was a, that was a disgusting time because I couldn't brush my tongue was white for like a few days it was disgusting I was on antibiotics and I was fine after a week but it was it was just disgusting disgusting anyway. um and then I did my I booked it again booked it in August luckily I found a slot and then um I failed my first time I failed but I felt like I became a better driver because the nerves I had for my first test were indescribable. I couldn't breathe. Like every time, like, you know when you're waking up and you've got a test, especially if it's your first one, the nerves were eating me up. Like I couldn't breathe. If I thought about it for too long, I would just start to sweat. So I was very, very nervous the first time. But then I failed. I failed because I had, um, my major was, uh, what was it? It was like a traffic sign. I wasn't reading the traffic signs properly, but I think it was all due to nerves and stuff like that. So I failed, but I just felt like I, I had become a better driver. I was just like, you know what? I'm driving like my instructor. I'm driving, my driving test area was, is so far from me. It's not an area that I'm familiar with. It, it's, it's so far from me. It's not an area I'm familiar with. So I was doing my test in a brand, like it was a new area, but because of my driving instructor, we just kind of drove everywhere, but it was just we didn't practice the test um, area because it, literally it took up so much time just to get to that point. So it was like, we'll just drive around the area. And I did manual as well because since 17, I'd been doing manual. So I was like, I'm just gonna just do manual, get out of the way. And then yeah, and then I booked my test in September. And then that test, I, I just knew I was gonna pass. I knew I was gonna pass. I was ready to even buy um, a car, but I was like, let me just chill out. Um, but I knew I passed my test. So, and I did it, passed, I passed with three minors. Um, it was really good, really easy. Um, yeah, we were doing a test, there was even roadblocks, I had to do three point turns, U turns, I had to do a lot of things, but I was, because I was so relaxed, and I had the same um, instructor, yeah, instructor, she was really sweet. And yeah, and then she was like, you passed. I was like, thank you. And that was that. And then so I got my I got my license and then it came to getting a car. 
I was honestly going to, I'll insert pictures so you guys get an idea because maybe not everyone knows cars. I didn't really know cars before I started like taking an interest in them. I was happy to get like a GLA, like even manual because I had been doing so many lessons with manual. Um, someone's going to ask how many lessons did I do? I think I did about 30 hours before my test. Um, but that's also because I failed the first time and then I had to do like two more, te uh, two more lessons to prepare me for the next one. Um, but yeah, I was, I was going to get a manual GLA, Mercedes GLA, and I wanted to get a used car. I didn't want to buy a new car because obviously it's just, <laughs> I'm just past. I want a brand new car. I have no interest in buying a brand new car. So I was looking at um, GLAs, and then I was just like, oh, the interior isn't exactly what I want because I wanted a new dashboard. Um, so I started looking at Audis. I hated the interior of Audis. No offense to anyone that drives one. If you like it, I love it. Um, but it just wasn't for me. I started, I started looking at loads of different cars. And then one day, um, I was looking at Kazoo. That's where I got my car from. Kazoo had uh, a CLA. Um, the dashboard I wanted, it was automatic, even though I wanted to get manual. But the price for it was really, really good. Um, I, was, I was ready to spend... Oh, not, yeah, a bit a month, a bit a month on a car that I liked, and the car, the CLA was half the price that I was like willing to pay. So I was like, oh my gosh, it's automatic, but it's fine. So I got the car, and let's set a picture here. I love her very, 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 very much. Um, she drives. She's a sweet one. Because I live in London, I'm like, whoa. If I had a manual with car in London, driving in London. I know it makes you a better car, a bit more fun, you feel like you're driving more, I get it, I get it, because that's why I felt like, oh no, I want to get a manual with my first car, because I really, really want to learn the roads. But if you're in if you're in, in and out of traffic on a regular basis, automatic is the way, and if you're going to do a lesson, honestly, Mercedes is going to stop doing um, manual cars from, I think that's where they've really stopped, they've really stopped doing manual cars, it's, the world is going electric, so you may as well do automatic. I mean, if you already know manual, you could just do manual because manual lessons are cheaper. Um, you could do manual, but yeah, I just went automatic and I will never look back. I'll never look back. I can I can drive a manual. I'm still okay driving a manual, but I don't want that as my actual car ever. But if I have to, I'll drive it, but I, it won't be a car that I'll be spending my money on. It'll be like a rental, you know, if I'm like, let's say I'm in different countries or from here, then the only car I could get is manual. I can drive both, but... I love my automatic, I love my little CLA, she's so cute. Um, yeah, I love her. Uh, I'm gonna obviously do vlogs, there's vlogs coming up, I promise you. Uh, life has just been going at 100 miles per hour and you know me and my overwhelmingness. I filmed a whole weekly vlog, I've got a new camera. Didn't really know how to use it, messed it up a little bit with trying to work out the settings and I filmed a whole weekly vlog with no sound. That was, that was great, that was my treat. So we're gonna do it again and just kind of come up with a different way to film it. So it's definitely coming, I promise you. But yes, thank you to everyone. Everyone say congratulations, because you guys know, oh, the driving thing with me has been on and off, on and off. So I'm so happy to get that out of the way. And someone asked me if Ade is happy that he doesn't have to drive everywhere. Oh, he's, he's over the moon. He is over the moon. We went to um, a party the other day and he was just snapping himself like I snap himself in his car. I snap myself in his car. He was calling himself a dashboard prince. Ick. I wanted to switch seats. I was like, listen, I'm gonna park up. I wanna change. It was like dancing to music in the car. He was singing along. He was looking around because he can do that, you know? I'm the one focusing. Yeah, everywhere we go now, he's not driving. He's not, so it's fair enough. He's been literally been driving me for like five years. So I owe him a lot of lifts. I owe a lot of people a lot of lifts. So yeah, I'm gonna have a lot of catching up to do. Someone said, are you happy about your natural hair? I love my natural hair. I have it out right now. This is, this is all me, babes, this is all me. Um, I'm really delicate with it. I love her. I treat her real sweet, real tender, but with love and care. Um, ever since lockdown, ever since I did my chop, I haven't looked back. I have no regrets. I love it. I never turn to the relax of the cream crack. I don't think I'll ever, ever go back again. And I'm so glad because I always worried. Obviously, I was I was addicted to the cream crack, the chemical relaxer. I always thought like, if I have a daughter, what am I gonna do? 
like she's gonna look at me and be like oh or even nieces nephews just just the younger younger generation they're just gonna look at me and think oh she has her hair always straight why is it my hair like that no i want them to see myself and see okay i can rock my hair as well and i'm also also like the oldest of i've spoken about this before i'm oldest in my uh, family oldest in my like um extended family i'm just a big big kid almost basically an auntie so uh, but i'm not at the same time and i'm a niece i'm a niece but um yeah so i love my natural hair won't look back i dyed it and i really love it i was contemplating if i'm gonna go back to black or continue coloring it and i said i think i mentioned it and one was like do not go back to black this is your color i feel like it is so I'm gonna keep it and also dyeing my hair has loosened my curls and I'm not complaining if you don't want that to happen then maybe you shouldn't do it I didn't put any bleach in my hair so my hair's still fine but it's just loosened my curls but I find that it's even better to take care of because my hair is still very 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 thick don't get it twisted it's still very thick but my curls are a lot looser and I like it I think it, it works um, it's easier to maintain um, people ask me if I had a texture release. I haven't. It's just from dyeing my hair. But um, yeah, and the new growth looks really great. My hair's growing really fast. So it's in good condition. My hair's great. So I love it. I love it. And I just wear wigs just so I can put the heat and all the blow drying on that, and that hair and style it how I want. And then when I'm done, come back to natural, wear that for a bit. I, 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 I change my hair often, you guys know. I kind of change my hair on a weekly basis i get tired very very quickly i was just blonde yesterday this weekend i was blonde i was a blonde girl i was pamela anderson for a few days Pammy. anywho another question let's see how long have you been in a relationship and what has sustained it for this long um it'll be six years in december i get this question often um i'm not gonna lie guys i what would I say? It's it's literally just wanting to be in a rela in that relationship. I, I there's no other way to really put it. If you want to be in a relationship, you'll always want to work at it, and you know you'll always want to get through things. So I think that's what it is. If you guys are both on the same page and you guys work towards things, and like let's say I'm not, I'm not happy about something, I express it he'll take it in maybe he has some viewpoints maybe you disagree maybe i disagree we'll talk about it amicably amicably um we're always respectful like if we argue it's never ever 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 going to be disrespectful because you need to be you need to watch how you talk to people not even just relationships just people in general you need to watch how you talk to people because you're upset and you're this way but it doesn't mean that you need to go low and hit the belt like that's my thing i see people that go low in relation they go low and i'm like how do you come back from it because for me once the gra glass is cracked that's it the glass is cracked you can't repair the, the crack it's gonna be there you need a whole new vase so you need to i'm i'm really big on that just watch how you talk to people um relationship no relationship uh you don't you don't know what people are going through this that but in relationship both of you you always work at it uh and yeah if you see any amber flags deal with it then and there quickly don't let it build up if you've gone through something and you've dealt for past it and you've said everything you need to say leave it there don't now bring it up into the next argument because it's void absolutely void like if you've talked about something you've gone through not don't bring it up because that's put to bed you should have said everything you need to say then and there okay you should have said what you needed to say you said it cool if you say you're over it then you're over it you leave it there that's for friendships that's for relationships that's for everything leave it there it's not fair to make someone feel guilty again and again and again and again um that's it but mainly you just want to work at the relationship and you have love for one another and they're your best friend and yeah, you just want a future with them, so you'll always want to work at it. I think once someone gets complacent, once they don't care anymore, that's when, you know, problems really start. Me and Ade, we've been solid, 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 solid. And I pray and pray, I pray and pray and pray and pray we can continue to be like this for the rest of our lives. Anywho, um, not, not that soft shit, I'm a gangster. Gangster girls! Anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, how does it feel to be?
be the prettiest bitch in the game. Oh, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. You know, there's uh, a certain type of pressure. Uh, you wake up every day and you have a job to fulfill. And you know, you need to give inspiration. That ain't easy. I'm joking. Um, thank you so, so much. Uh, I'm definitely not the prettiest in the game. There's a lot of pretty women in the world. Let me tell you this. Men have it so easy. They're, for every like 10, gorgeous 10 girls, there's about like one decent enough guy to match it. I'm telling you, the ratio is not correct. There's very, wow, men are, men are, men are very blessed. What's your weirdest pet peeve? Um, you're beautiful, by the way, thank you. Um, pet peeve, <sighs> okay, it's gonna be hard to describe, but I hate anyone putting in any type of weight on my knees, I can't handle it, handle it. Like, let's say if I've got here, it's like someone wants to sit on my knees, you can't, you can't do that, you can't do that. You have to sit here, on my thighs, or my shins, I hate weight on my knees. Like, let's say I'm like here, and someone wants to lean on me, hit me, you can't do that, you can't, I don't know why, I just feel like my knees are just gonna like snap backwards, absolutely not, horrid. I can have it when my knees are bent like this, but if they're straight, no weight on my knees. No weight, it just feels like they're gonna snap, I don't know why, I'm really, I'm really ugh about that. Um, another one is like rubbing. I can't describe like styrofoam, oh, that'll do it, even just the sound. Styrofoam rubbing, I can't handle it. I can't, I can't on my fingers, anything. I don't like hearing people's feet rub, like the back of the foot, that sound, I hate it. Um, weird textures, there's some type of textures, like I don't like them rubbing against my nails. When they fall off, I, 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 don't, I don't know exactly what that sound is, I just don't like it. But styrofoam will do it for me, I'll have to leave the room. Balloons rubbing, oh, oh my God. Ugh. Sorry, <laughs> I can't talk about it too much. Rubbing, I just don't like rubbing. Uh, it sounds really ridiculous. I don't mind skin to skin or anything like that, but like it's, it's certain type of textures, like rubbery textures. That'll do it for me, that'll do it for me for sure. Would you host a masterclass brunch for your followers? Absolutely, I wouldn't want to do like a masterclass, but I saw Leah's face did um, a brunch just for her supporters and I love that. I absolutely love that. So something like that, because what masterclass could I give you guys? You know, that I wouldn't just do in a video. Like if it's anything for filming and setting up, I'll do that in a video. Makeup, I'll do that in a video. I just don't feel like you need to come and see it. But we can interact in person and chill and have a good time. You know, I'd rather do that than you guys sit and watch me on like a panel. <clears throat> Sorry, that's not me. That's not me. I wouldn't do that to my sports. I want to be in the mix, talking to you guys, mingling, sitting down, chatting. That's more me, like more interactive with like panels and stuff. No, no, no. Not something like I would do, I would host and do a panel, but not with like my supporters. You know, because you guys are like, I say hey friends and all that, I mean it. So I'm not gonna be like, yeah, hey friends, come and sit and watch me talk about. I don't know, content creation thing. I, I, I could do this in a video. I could do it in a video, you know? Because it still feels a bit distant. With my supporters, I want to be in the mix. So I'd love to do something like that. That's amazing. So yeah. How do you deal with shame? I'm filled with it and it doesn't go away. Hi. Um, oof. Shame is an emotion that like, because oh, I get embarrassed easily. Just embarrassed alone. I get embarrassed easily. So shame depends on what you're shameful for. It depends. Um, I need a bit more context. Shame. How do I deal with shame? Because being embarrassed and shame is two different things. Shame. I say give it time. I say give it time. Because there's not something that's going to go away like that. Depending on what it is. Time. Um, and just know that people don't care as much as you think they care. They really, really don't. They really, really don't. The way life is going right now, everything is so chaotic, everything is so all over the place. You are one small fish in a big world, so if, you, if people are judging or saying whatever about you, just know that they're on to the next topic very quickly. The news, news goes quickly, there's something new every day, so don't, don't think too hard on it. Give yourself, you know, forgive yourself. That's another thing. Whatever you, whatever's happened, forgive yourself and move on and just try and do better, I guess. I think that's what I would get, I'd say. 
be accountable for whatever happened, forgive yourself, move on from it. You're not a bad person, depending, depending, on, depending on what's going on, I don't know. But yeah, shame, it's not an easy emotion. It's definitely not an easy emotion to just get over. There's embarrassment, I feel like embarrassment is quick, it's a quick emotion. Shame is like shame and guilt, so um, you definitely need to give yourself some time. And if you can, maybe therapy, I don't know, because I don't know that much context, but that's what I would say. Have you ever felt like you're behind in life or not doing enough? How did you cope with it? Honestly, you you have to be tunnel vision. As soon as I just started just paying attention to myself and what am I doing and looking within, it made a big difference. I've started my, seeing myself just move more, just, just being a bit more productive. I think when you look too much on the outside, it's, it's, it's like, tr like driving, I guess. If you're focusing yourself, you're getting to your A and B, you're great. If you pay attention to what's going on around you, you could crash. Yeah, that's my analogy, you could crash. And no, genuinely, if you're, if you're driving, you know, you're paying attention to the road, you're paying attention to where you're going, you're focused on your destination. But if you're looking around, you're not paying attention, you could crash, you could hurt yourself. You know, you could end up in the wrong lane, wrong side, it, all those things. So focus on where you're going, focus on what you want to do, work, take each day at a time, and you'll see yourself going where you need to go. When I was feeling behind in life, um, it's definitely sad. I, 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 won't, I won't say it's not, it's definitely sad. It's definitely frustrating when you feel like other people are getting opportunities and maybe you're being overlooked. Um, definitely, oh, I've been there so uh, many times, and I'll probably be, feel like that again one time. Who knows? Uh, but it's just something you have to take to a bit of a pinch of salt. That's yeah, as hard as it is. You just have to take a pinch of salt, and you have to keep looking forward, keep going forward. And as long as you're doing that, you'll, you know, God willing, you'll get to where you need to go. Yeah. Oh. I hope, I hope you do, I hope you do. Do you think your childhood self would think your adult self was cool? My childhood self, I'm not gonna lie, I would be gassed. Yeah, I would be gassed. Um, absolutely, I, I'm not even gonna fake it to you guys. I would be so proud of myself and that's, that's what I would say to the other um, question is like, you feel like you're not this, this, that, but you have to think about what my younger self think of me now. And most of the time, your young self will be proud, you know? You've, oh, you're living uh, past your insecurities. Like for me, I know my younger self will be like, oh my gosh, you have all your hair back and your forehead is out. <gasps> like, what the hell? Like, we've got past that insecurity. Like, you're not insecure about that anymore. Oh my days. You like the way you look now. You like your lips. You like how your your shape is. Like, you've got past all those, those insecurities. Wow. You're in beauty. That's what you said you wanted to do. Wow. Um, you were living in an apartment by yourself. A really nice apartment. Like, you've got, you're driving now. You know, you've got your friends, your family. I, my younger self would think that's really cool. I think my younger self out of everything would be surprised at how far I've come past my insecurities. That is for sure. They'd be like, oh. I think out of everything, they'd be like, whoa, you have really not cared what anyone thinks. I think, yeah, that could even get me emotional. I'm gonna continue doing the questions. Okay, favorite moment of this year so far? Ooh. I, I feel like I've had a few. My memory's so rubbish. My memory's really rubbish. What, what's even happened this year? <laughs> what's even happened this year? Um, oh, probably passing my test. The biggest thing, yeah, passing my test, getting that out of the way, um, having like a workout routine, seeing a difference in my body, um, work still going as amazing as ever, and my following growing, I've hit like 300K on Instagram, so yeah, I'd say all those little things, those are all my milestones have made me super happy. Yeah, Aww, I'm just gonna leave that there. That was like a nice high note. Oh, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any better answers or any answers to the questions that I got, please leave them down below. I'm gonna be in the comments, I'm gonna be chatting away to every, every, every single comment. I really wanna do more of that and speak to you guys one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I love you guys so much if you watched this far. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. <laughs>